Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, uh, Marco. Uh, thank you, uh, all of you, uh, first of all, for the uh, invitation, uh, but most of all for the work that we have done together over the past yeah. year. Uh, regions and local authorities, uh, not only that they can play a role, but they do play a role, an important role in foreign policy. And here I refer both to local authorities in Europe and also in our neighboring countries. You are not just uh, an interlocutor for our foreign policy. Uh, today, cities and regions are a foreign policy player in themselves, and you know that much better than anyone else. We live in a world of continent-sized powers, and that is true. But the globalized world is also a fragmented one. Power is much more diffused than it used to be. State authorities are very often challenged by actors that are not state actors. The frontiers that were drawn in the 20th century are questioned, and threats ignore the borders of the states. Societies are more fragmented. Some describe our days as the age of neo-tribalism. States are very often perceived as too far from their citizens. And local authorities are powerful in this context. Our powerful actor and often the institution that is most recognized by the citizens as the really powerful one. In this context, we need to think big continent size, we need to broker regional, and we see it in the many conflicts we have around us, and we have to act local. And here, the partnership among us can make the difference. Thinking big means that our aim must be a new global order, one based on cooperation rather than on competition or confrontation. One where global powers and regional organizations, including the European Union, cooperate towards peace and stability in a scheme that is not uh, one against the other, but rather a win-win situation for all. But we will not succeed if we do not keep in mind the local dimension of what we do, and we act local. This is something you understand much better than anyone else. I very much agree with what uh, you said, President, in an interview a couple of days ago. So we read each other's speeches. <laughs> which is a good form of cooperation. Good. In the current refugee crisis, local authorities in Europe are at the front line. You deal with welcoming the refugees, managing the difficulties of welcoming the refugees. You often have to provide them with shelter and food, and you need and you deserve support for this. Let me say that my national background makes it very evident for me to understand that. At the same time, this is a global crisis. It's not only local, uh, the dimension we have to tackle this. On the contrary. At the beginning of this, some believed it was just a matter for a few islands in the Mediterranean or a few coastal states in the European Union. Then the attention was shifted to the Western Balkans route. But it is now clear to everybody that we cannot just focus on one route or another or we can put in competition one route to the other, or one member state to the other. We need to look at the European and global dimension of this challenge, which is a difficult one. It's not going to disappear anytime soon. For this reason, we put together a broad strategy on migration, a strategy to tackle, first of all, the root causes of the current crisis, a strategy to work with the countries of transit of refugees, the countries that are hosting the majority of them, starting from the ones in the Middle East, and also increasing the level of cooperation with the countries of origin and transit of economic migrants. Because here we are facing two different routes, two different kinds of people moving, economic migrants and refugees, sometimes mixed in the same flow. And we need to use all the instruments we have, globally, regionally, and locally, to give, as you said, tailor-made uh, approaches to the different kind of problems we have. And you have all my understanding and personal solidarity, because I know very well how difficult it is to manage such a complex problem, not only when dealing with the flows, but also when dealing with your local communities that are facing 
the difficult phase of welcoming in a respectful way uh, the flow of uh, migrants or refugees. And as we do all this, the global and local dimension of our action must go together. On the one hand, we are working to find political solutions to the crisis in Syria or in Libya through regional and international diplomacy. And I would be more than ready to share more with you on this, uh, and I guess some of the questions might come in this direction. But on the other hand, we are working with uh, communities hosting the highest number of refugees around Syria's borders. First of all, in Lebanon, uh, in Jordan, and with Turkey. Or with the communities in Niger, the country where 75% of the migratory flow cross before entering into Libya, to break the economic dependency from human trafficking and to find new sources of economic growth. This approach does not only apply to the issue of migration. Working with local communities is crucial to stabilizing a country like Iraq, from where a large part of refugees uh, on the eastern uh, Balkan route uh, are coming. We have recently started to work in the Iraqi regions that were liberated from Daesh. We are demining their lands, helping their citizens to go back to their homes, trying to foster reconciliation among different communities. The Iraqi government has recently transferred some powers to the provincial governors of area freed from Daesh. At the right time, it will be important that European local authorities engage with their Iraqi, with your Iraqi counterparts through decentralized cooperation and city diplomacy to support institution building and good governance. This is our point of strength of the European uh, experience. The defeat of Daesh will very much depend on international cooperation among regional and world powers, but it will also depend on what can be achieved on a more local scale, restoring hope, restoring the confidence of the people to be able to go back to their own communities, restarting life as usual, creating inclusive democracies where citizens of all backgrounds can participate. And this, you know that better than anyone else, happens first of all at the local level. Local authorities will be key to these efforts, just as much as the civil society. This is true in Iraq and in our entire neighborhood. A top-down approach where states are the only relevant actors, I believe belongs to the past. The events of recent years in our old neighborhood tell us very clearly so. We can achieve real change only if we reach out to both the political sphere and the civil society actors. For this reason, our fora with civil society organizations are an important part of our neighborhood policy. And we need to keep promoting them as we also invest on people-to-people -people contacts. That is what creates the regional dimension uh, of our partnership. I know you do not need to be lectured on cooperation with civil society and local communities in our neighborhood, because a mechanism such as the decentralized cooperation stock exchange is already putting in contact local authorities in the EU and in developing countries. But you also know that local authorities can play an important role in finding a solution to the current crisis. It's not just the traditional diplomacy doing this job and you managing the everyday uh, consequences of the crisis. I believe local authorities uh, are key partners and allies for peace. And there are member states that have a long tradition in this respect. The work we have done together on Libya, that you mentioned, show the way. And to me, I always repeat it, not here, but outside, that uh, the work we have done with the municipalities in Libya is one of the most successful ones. Unfortunately, we don't have had many successful examples uh, in that respect, but this is really uh, a good success story. We have all realized how important it is to work with Libya's municipalities. Throughout the conflict, they have displayed a strong sense of responsibility and leadership, a brave one. Local ceasefires have been agreed and implemented in the West, and prisoner exchanges carried out. Libya's mayors have something very clear in mind that I think all of you can understand very well. They have clear in mind that their citizens want the conflict to end as soon as possible. 
they are the ones that are in direct contact with the people. And they know the Libyans want to restart rebuilding the country. For doing that, they need an agreement, they need peace. The two meetings we organized with the Libyan mayors here in Brussels uh, over the last months showed how much we and they can achieve through this cooperation. It has been city diplomacy at its best. We will need to carry on this dialogue in the months to come, especially in the months to come that are going to be the most critical ones. We are urging all Libyan parties to endorse the agreement that was reached last week by their representative with the mediation of the UN envoy Bernardino Leon. And yesterday in Luxembourg, we all uh, together with the foreign ministers of the 28 member states uh, adopted council conclusions strongly sending this message to our Libyan friends. A government of national accord can be the first step towards peace in Libya can be the only first step towards peace in Libya. Still, we know very well that even reaching uh, a final agreement on uh, a national unity government uh, will not put an end to all the difficulties in the country. The challenges facing the country are and will remain huge. We will need to follow up with the work we have done so far. A three million euros program has been approved to support local governance in, in Libya through institutional support to 33 Libyan municipalities. It will start to be implemented in Libya as soon as the government of national accord is established and the security situation allows it and improves a little bit. But we know very well that there are things we can do with the Libyan municipalities uh, already. The municipalities can, and I believe are ready to play a central role in the reconstruction of Libya and we need you to keep engaging with them because I believe they need you to partner in this difficult path for their country. Uh, the RLM uh, has played an important part in organizing the meetings with the Libyan mayors. And beyond that, I really appreciate the role of regional and local authorities in Mediterranean politics. I will keep seeking their cooperation in all our external activities in this respect. Clearly, this is not just about the Mediterranean. Think of how crucial local government is and will be for the future of Ukraine. Again, you mentioned it. Decentralization that is uh, the core of so many experiences inside the European Union is a key part of the Minsk agreements. We welcome Ukraine's step towards constitutional reform, fiscal de decentralization, the preparation for merger of small towns into more sustainable communities, all issues that somehow are or have been or will be on the agenda of our member states and your work in your everyday uh, life. Making these reforms work in Ukraine will be an important step towards a strong, stable and independent country. It will be indeed part of the implementation of the Minsk uh, agreements and a very relevant one. And decentralization is central to the reform agenda of many countries in the Eastern neighborhood. This is why the conference of the regional and local authorities uh, for the Eastern partnership can be an important player in our outreach to our Eastern neighbors. Ever since its establishment in 2011, CORLEP has sought to bring together regional and local representatives, both from the European Union and the Eastern partnership countries and plays an important role in fostering cooperation among them. And let me say, it is even more important now than it has ever been in the past. Many of our partners within the Eastern Partnership have to engage with the old society and all levels of government to realize their difficult but ambitious reform agenda. These reforms require broad support from the grassroots, from the people, from the citizens. And this is where local and regional authorities play the key crucial role that you know in your own countries. This is the core of our approach to our region. The only way to achieve our goals is in partnership with our neighbors. And when we say partners, we do not simply mean the states, but local authorities, civic society, business community, the social actors. And let me mention also, we have a common agenda, we have common keywords, <laughs> Uh, the fact that the Nobel Peace Prize uh, given to uh, the quartet uh, uh, 
uh, in Tunisia is also an indication of how much the civil society uh, can do uh, for the stability um, and also the security, because preventing conflicts is sometimes more, is always more convenient than managing them, uh, security and stability of the countries. So I totally agree with the proposal you put forward during our European neighborhood policy review process. We should work more with regional and local authorities and not only with national governments. And this is a commitment I can personally take. We need to do it in yeah. partnership with you. We want uh, a European neighborhood policy that is based on real partnership with our neighbors. And here ownership is crucial because let me say we have many uh, good uh, uh, attitudes, but sometimes we are perceived a little bit paternalizing and we have to overcome this attitude. When we say partnership, we have to mean partnership. And this means that we need to find with each of our partners policies that have to be tailored made and differentiated, meeting our interest and their interest in our common uh, partnership and in our cooperation. We will increase the focus on key sectors in our partnerships, new ones uh, that are of common interest. Uh, I think of energy, transport connectivity, economic development, migration and mobility, but also security. This is an area that traditionally doesn't go inside the ENP uh, partnership uh, framework, but uh, we are working on including this uh, uh, area, the area of security, uh, as an important uh, uh, part of our common work with our partners, uh, starting from important issues such as security sector reform and counterterrorism, which are of mutual interest for our partners in the region, especially in the Mediterranean and in the Middle East, and uh, to us. We are currently finalizing the review process of the ENP, and we plan to have the communication uh, on the new ENP adopted uh, in mid-November. The new ENP will be a more powerful tool to contribute to the stability of our partners and in this way to contribute to our stability and security. Because let me say another thing that sometimes we tend to forget. Strong partners are a plus to us. We need strong powers if we want strong partnerships and if we want a strong European Union. The weakness of the others don't make us stronger, the contrary. Before I conclude, let me add one final thing. Local authorities in Europe will have an important role to play and on yet another file. You will be at the forefront, not just on regional matters, but on a number of global issues. You mentioned your dedication to the Millennium Development Goals. In the new 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, governments have agreed to work closely with local authorities. And your ownership will be essential uh, to implement the agenda successfully. There are some goals that are simply impossible to achieve if not in partnership with local and regional authorities. The same goes for the current negotiations on how to tackle climate change. Uh, the Lima Paris Action Agenda, one of the building blocks of the COP21 deal, is focusing on how non-state actors, from local authorities to private companies, can support decisions taken at the level of states. Climate change is one of the great challenges of our age and it affects the all of us and all of us all of us must take our own responsibilities also because it's local and regional authorities in the end of the day that will have to manage the consequences uh, of not being able to manage climate change effectively in Europe or elsewhere in the world Europe can lead the change towards a new kind of foreign policy one based on responsibility one based on partnership at all different levels. And to this aim, cooperation among us is fundamental. Here in the European Union institutions, first of all, we must try and think as one, and we must try and act as one, as a true union. Uh, you mentioned my commitment to the Parliament. I can add my commitment to you and to our common work, and in general terms, to a serious, consistent, focused, common work of all the European Union institutions, including the Committee of Regions, which is an important EU institution. You are players of our foreign policy. Global challenges call for global alliances, but also for local responses. And we need to think to new architectures, where all levels, the international, 
the regional, the national, the local, have a place and play their part. I believe our partnership in this respect is making the European Union a strong or a weak actor worldwide. If we manage to do what we have to do, think big and act local as we can do together. I think this is a goal that we can only achieve working together as we have successfully, I believe, done in this first year of my mandate. I thank you very much.